All right, let's get this party started. Today we're studying calculus. Specifically, we're learning about power series. And more specifically, we're considering sums like this. And uh, this is a particularly easy one. It's a geometric sum. And everybody and their grandmother knows how to add these. You go like this, you go, it's the powers of one fifth. So it's one fifth all the way to that power plus one minus one all over one fifth minus one. We've proven this and discussed it quite a few times. So I won't dwell on it too much. However, I will say, say this again and again and again. If this guy is smaller than one in absolute value, that forces this guy to go to zero. And so you're left with a nice sum. Uh, this will definitely converge. And then the question arises, what if you change that, that one to something else? What if that one was a two, this is still converge? Well, obviously it does because the absolute value is still less than one. What if it was negative two? What if it was three? What if it was 3.7, etc., etc. Whoa, what if it was 5.1? This one would be equal to 5.7 raised to the infinity plus one minus one all over 5.7 minus one. That would definitely diverge because uh, 5.7 times itself many, many times is, uh, is big, really big. So uh, considering the question for which exits does it converge or diverge, this one obviously diverges because the absolute value is greater than 1, the absolute value of the base on the power. Um, so so there, that gives rise to the following question. What could I put in this box for which values uh, that are filled in that box would this converge? That's the underlying question. And so we, the common way to phrase it is can you solve the x's for which it converges? Or often people will say, can you find the interval of convergence? The meaning the largest one. Um, as, as in just one, what's the largest interval that the series converges on over? Or sometimes people say, what's the radius of convergence? Anyways, this one's not so bad. Um, we can figure it out. If we said it before, this will converge if r is greater than 1. Uh, so our thing that we're taking the power is x over, over 5, so therefore it'll converge when x over 5 is less than 1. Here, this is the general rule. So it applied to this specific problem will give us this. And so we know that it will converge if um, x over 5 is less than 1. That would mean that x over 5 is less than 1 and it's less than negative 1 greater than negative one. So that would mean by multiplying both sides, I would have to find my x to be within five and negative five. So here's what I know so far. It converges, converges for all these x's, the x's that are within negative five to five. These ones, we have convergence. The endpoint, I don't know, because the test is inconclusive whenever you have x, whenever that, um, uh, the absolute value of this is equal to 1, so it's inconclusive here, inconclusive here, but it's conclusive here. We know here it diverges, and here it diverges. So we're really close to uh, answering the question, for which x's does the series converge? Uh, converges from negative 5 to 5 in the interior, diverges outside, and the endpoints, well, that's still up for graphs in which you check these separately. We need to check, check separately, and check separately because this test wouldn't help you when, um, when when your value is really, really close to 1. So for that, we actually do it manually here. Uh, we test, for example, uh, x equals 5. So that plug in x equals negative 5 there gives us the sum of negative 5 over 5 raised to the n as n runs from 0 to infinity. Clean it up a little bit. This looks like the sum of negative 1s to the n as n runs from 0 to infinity, clearly that diverges by divergence test, for example. The limit doesn't even go to 0, so there's no hope. And we're done with that, so this would not be included. Now we'd like to test the other endpoint, x equals 5. We checked it already. This, this should not be included. x equals 5, we plug it into your x here. That would give us 5 over 5 raised to the n. Simplify it a little bit. Sum of all the 1s clearly diverges by divergence test. Adding 1 plus 1 plus 1 infinitely times, there's no hope of convergence. So this is checked. So therefore, we have, we have concluded that the only x's for which this works is uh, x's that are strictly between 5 and negative 5. No other x will work here. So we have answered the question, what's the largest interval of convergence? Well, it's from negative 5 to 5. 
Alright, that wasn't so bad, right? Let's come back and we'll do more examples. That's the main idea.